Yeah. You gotta work. You gotta work. Grind, shine, it's mine. Gotta show everybody it's my time. Get in here, you gotta work. Grind, shine, never mind who talking down, cause they lie. Don't talk, you gotta work. Let the conversation begin. This is Let's Talk with your host, Carl Lee. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carl Lee with Let's Talk. And uh, today we've got a really good, interesting conversation because I don't know anybody that's been in sports that has not yelled at an official, <laughs> got a, got maybe got thrown out or something. And so we're going to talk about some new rules that I find really, really interesting that I think is going to be really challenging for no matter what the level is to to be able to play the game. Mm-hmm. So I have my co-host over there, Hollis Lewis. What's going on? And uh and Jason, my 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 new art my, my new official. Tell us some things about yourself. Give us all the good stuff. Um and we talked earlier, so don't you know don't feel like you gotta leave any of that stuff out because I because I want Hollis to know exactly too where you are as a as an official um going forward. So give us a little bit of an insight. Okay. Uh, my name is Jason Wilkinson. Uh, my, got a, my wife is Carrie Ann Wilkinson. Uh, we, we're small business owners in the, in the local area also. Been officiating basketball for uh, 27 years. Been officiating football for about 15 years. I've been working at the NCAA level in basketball for 24 years, in football for 13 years. Uh, Basketball wise, uh, right now I'm the majority of my stuff is at uh, the NCAA Division II level. Uh, last year I worked the boys high school state tournament, and I also worked the AAA championship game in football. Um, little history: I've worked multiple NCAA tournaments. I also worked uh, Division One for about ten years on the women's side. I worked in the Big East, uh, the Atlantic Ten, and the American East. So I've worked at all levels of basketball, uh, football. I've w- worked only as high as Division Two. I've never worked any Division One football. Currently, uh, work for the MEC and the President's Athletic. Uh, our supervisor of officials is Gene Sterator. Some of you all might know Gene. He works at NBC. He does the rules for football, NFL, and uh, NCAA men's basketball. Um, I've worked uh, farthest, the highest level I've ever worked. I worked the Elite Eight in 2013 in San Antonio. In, in oh, that's Division a big two. deal. Yeah, in Division yeah. Two. That's the that's the farthest that I've been. I worked probably six or seven boys state tournaments, one girls state tournament, and I've worked two Super Sixes, uh, one in 2017, and then last year in 2022. So that's my nice. So. <sighs> We we had talked and and it's oddly that this this the, the three of us all kind of got hooked up for this particular show is mm-hmm. is because <clears throat> Hollis had sent me a clip of a new rule that's going into the NFL um, may pass down to the college and and I guess at that point when you go college usually it's high school and on down basically mm-hmm. so. Tell us a little bit about and 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 Hollis. Let's. I, I'll. I, do you want to describe kind of what the tackle is? No, or, go ahead. Or, so, yeah. the way that I'm understanding this is, and I'm trying to and I'm trying to decipher how to how do how do I how would I even be able to tackle yeah, if weird. this rule is in 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 play? So, if I if I'm coming in to make a tackle, and I decide to go low. And if I drop my, if I drop, so I make, I wrap you up and I drop, then that now is some form of a penalty because of, I guess, again, a safety factor, because a lot of times your legs get caught underneath and you can end up hurt, breaking an ankle. Now, um, and this is from the, like the defenders coming from the back, correct? I don't know if it has to be coming from the back. So. J- I don't know anything about this. So after you call when you when you called me a couple hours ago, I went in and did a little research right. and tried to look it up, try to figure out what exactly it is. And the the one article I found, it's more or less a safety foul because defenders when they're coming from behind, they're 
to get the player down, they're dropping their full body weight on the back of the knees, which mm-hmm. is is I don't really understand how that it's going to interpret into uh, into officiating how how we're going to determine whether it's a, a body weight foul or not. I'm mm-hmm. I'm assuming it's similar to the NFL rule where it's full body weight on the quarterbacks. College football mm-hmm. and high school football really don't have that rule, right? So I, I really don't understand how they're going to in interpret that how we're going to interpret that it's it's going to be in the classification of like a horse collar tackle uh seeing they've changed the horse collar tackle rule in the past couple of years also you, you, horse collar was originally put in it had to be inside the call inside the the collar the collar of the jersey and pulled straight oh it's just on the nameplate and pulled back so they've also so even if you grab jersey that's yeah a jersey call. now it's nameplate if you okay. grab nameplate and pull directly back or sidewards mm-hmm. then that's what a horse see i didn't know is. that yeah. I, I didn't I, I didn't notice and, that. and to the new rule that you're speaking of i guess what i'm interpreting it as is that if a defender is coming up to an offensive player from behind and you're tackling around the waist and you're dropping your weight all the way down has to hyperextend, so to speak, that knee or ankle. I guess that's what they're trying to protect. But my, my in addition question, to back. My question to that though is, if I'm coming in behind you to make this tackle, yeah, and I wrap you up, I if, guess you would I, have to I, roll if, now. If, if, if I either got to drive you down forward or roll, or well, if I if I if I roll. So I'm pulling you as a roll. So you put lo- right or left. I'm still, dr- I'm still letting my legs go. Is that not, not necessarily because if you roll, you could land on your back and that way the defenders, on, excuse me, the offensive players on top of you and then he falls. So it's not necessarily. I don't think it's as detrimental as just pulling straight down. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how they're going to implement this. Uh, mm-hmm. So the way the rules work is, it, it works all at different levels that. All the different levels. So it goes to a prop committee. That prop committee then determines. They they see it. They 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 try to write it into into the rule language. Then it also go. Then it goes to another committee, who then takes it to an to another group of people who then vote on it. And then that's the way the rules are are written. NFL. I'm not exactly sure. I know exactly how high school and college works. So I'm not a. This to me, I don't know how much it, it it might be more rumor and innuendo than it is anything else, to tell you the truth, because I just don't know how they're gonna adjudicate it. I don't know how well, you would adjudicate it. Let, let me ask a question on top of that. So it seems to me like when you talk about particularly football and basketball, and it's kinda of always been this way in base to me, enforcing the rules have, is getting more and more subjective. Um, it's not like subjective call where we actually know, you know, what a horse collar is and we know what an offsides or false start is. How has that affected your ability to, I don't want to say call a good game, but it affected your ability to, you know, to, to ref, you know, within the confines of those rules when it seems like it's so subjective? Well, it's actually the exact opposite of what you just said. Okay. So it used to be. Old, because I'm old school now. Okay, I, I, I I've been in it. For we did a long have an old school conversation a little bit earlier. Yeah, so I'm I'm old school. So mm-hmm. used to be we we refereed on nothing but what was called tower principle, which was advantage okay. disadvantage. Now on the NCAA women's side, we're being tasked with calling the rules as written. So that's been a mandate the past two years is we call the rules as written. So they want us to be more black and white than what we used to be. Used to be we weren't black and white at all. We oh, okay. managed the game and we got through the game. So mm-hmm. so we called the stuff that actually affected. If it didn't have an effect on the game, we, we passed on it. We didn't mm-hmm. call it. But now we're being tasked to call the rules as written. So we call a lot more hand, in college women's, which is a lot different than college yeah. men's. We call a lot of hand checks, arm bars, two hands, multiple touches. We call all those fouls for freedom of movement fouls. So if you actually go and watch a women's game, the women's game has much better freedom of movement than, say, the men's game. Okay, well, let me ask a different question. Do you think because of that black and white um, sort of policy change that you're just calling it, no matter whether it affects the game or it doesn't affect the game, do referees have too much control and power over over the games? Particularly when I watch basketball, it's a stop every other play. It seems like it's just so much control as far as the referee football, basketball, that it, 
as a, as a viewer watching on television, it almost takes away from the game. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of it has to do with style of play also. So the the style of play, you, you get games where you're just going to call 65, 70 fouls. It's, be, it's because they're not they're not fundamentally sound anymore. They're they're not fundamentally sound to where they're they're playing defense and effectively. They're it's really rough, and you have to interject yourself. If you interject yourself, you end up with a free for all scrum. And 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 let me let me make this case that. The statement that was just made, right? That that is that is a statement to be made about the player that is on the field it is 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 not up to par. For so there so, so there are more calls mm-hmm. because of the lack of fundamental fundamentals training. that come with the game. But I just think no matter how many fundamentals you have, there's going to be a foul here that eh, it could go either way. There's going to be a, a hold here that can go either way. There's going to be a legal man downfield that could go either way. And it seems like if we have a, a policy now where we're saying it's black and white, I'm going to make the call regardless of whether, like you said, it affects the game. To me, that affects the game. It affects the viewership, the watching of it, if that makes sense. I I, I guess what – if I'm if I'm trying I'm trying to understand what you're saying because because I think I think the the idea of calling what is there mm-hmm. calling what the rule is makes sense to me so I do this this is what happens I, I for me I function under that idea and and you've heard me say this before like I quit as a coach I don't yell at the officials. I don't. I, when I was a football player, I didn't yell at the officials. There got to a point where I realized that whether I did it or not, if the call happens, it is what it is. There I mean, is no change. I, I mean, it's in in one sense, and I don't mean this as a negative. I mean it as a positive. It's a dictatorship when it comes to the officials. They yeah, have that I mean, call. I I I understand that, and I think you're right in taking that perspective it's almost a waste of time unless you know you just that kind of drives you just to yell at the future whatever but i just think you know for example if we're talking i think there's there's spots where officiation officiating has to catch up with the game for example we know 90 percent of offenses in in um high school and college they run rpos for those that don't know run pass option so that means that the quarterback he has the option to hand it off or pass that's what you see Legal man downfield. Okay. So you see that offensive lineman five, six yards down the field. How is that are you affecting alluding, the are play? You, are you alluding to that the officials should adopt that and allow that extra You have space? to catch up with the game in some sort of Well, that's that's, that's a rule thing, not it, an officiating. No, no, no. So, I understand. It's, yeah. not a, it's not on you. But you it's also have to understand the rules. So when you're talking about RPO, yeah. how far does the lineman have to go downfield? Uh, it's, th- it's three to five, right? In high school, it's two. It's high okay. school, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, also, when does that when does that lineman have to be? When when can that lineman be? Bef- what at what point does he have to be be short of that two yards? What? So people don't understand that it's when the ball's released, not when the ball's caught. Yeah. So that ball can be released, and that lineman can take another two to three steps and, and look like he's an ineligible man downfield, but isn't yeah. actually ineligible because it, it, it occurs – that limitation occurs when that ball's released, not when that ball's caught. Again, I understand that, but I guess what I'm saying is that if we have an RPO offense and quarterback, he fakes, instead of hands it off, he fakes it and makes the throw, and if that lineman, let's say in high school, he's four yards down the field, how does that affect the play? It just doesn't. But, but no, And again, I'm no, not saying – no, I, and I, hold on. I'm not saying it's on the official – I'm saying the rules need to change. No, so no, the officiating no, needs to no, catch up. No, I, I, it has to I, change I, to the game. No, it can't just stay the same. No. Okay, so if – if here's the case. And by the way, this is just what we do. So. Right. It's all good. Right. <laughs> it's so all good. We, when you start talking about you can only go two yards down the field yeah. before, that call is, before that call is made. So he's not throwing that flag until you get the three. Now – the question is, did, 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 were you coached on that RPO but that you can only is, go two? 
Here's the thing, because though. I think that's if important. I'm an offense alignment, I don't know if the quarterback who, is handed or not. No, no, that? no. I'm just saying it's modern offense. It's not about fault. It's, it's a modern offense. So I'm saying if it's a modern offense, this is what 90% of the teams have run. Of the rules need to catch up to that. No. It does. I, I think you can. So what you're saying is the dictation of the game is dictating the rule. Yeah, just like just so like we, no. just like we don't want concussions, just like we don't want hyper extensions of knees and, uh, and ankles and backs. The rules of catching up to safety. So the also the rules need to catch up to the game. I, I think I think so. All you have to do is send a send a rule change in. Who can send a rule change? In? Anybody can send a rule change. We can send a rule change. You can send a rule change. Oh, I'm coming. In. Send a rule change. I'm coming. I'm coming. Send it in. I'm coming. All you have to do is if you, if you, I'm coming. If you don't like ineligible players downfield at two, send it in. I make can it, send that in. It send no, it in. I see, I, but, but I'm, see, I'm coming. Okay. I'm but, writing policy right now. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what right, you're talking about. You're, you're talking yeah. about the rule set that we're working with. A hundred percent. I'm not yeah. talking about you as an official. Yeah. I'm just saying to me, the rules and the way the game is for the the way the game. Excuse me. The way in which the officials are forced to officiate it makes a, the game unwatchable. See, but this rule. In my, in my I've world. been I've been officiating football for 15 years, and this rule's been the same for 15 years. Yeah, but the offense have changed in yeah. the 15 years. Yeah, so but you, but, but 15 years ago, change, we weren't running our but RPO. But you can't change though, Hollis. You can't change because you changed the the the, the style of offenses to RPOs, and you. And you should already know that you only have two yards for your guys to go downfield. But everything so you changes. can teach that. Everything changes. You can teach that. Everything changes. We, we, well, what we, is going to be the we, difference? We accept then? marijuana. So are we going to get because, rid of? And the, and the rules have changed because we accept marijuana. So just like in society, rules need to adjust to the game. I, I These two I, rule, uh, laws adjust to society. I understand. I understand. And I'm but, sitting but, right in. He should have told me. Okay, that. but, whole, okay, but <laughs> it, it's no difference, though. It's no difference in. I mean, you still can't break in a a a store and rob somebody. We ain't talking about that. Society ain't adjusted to that. See, I've been off a week and he done missed me, so he ain't used to going. He ain't used to the he ain't used to the aggression. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I truly here's my here's my problem with it is to me I'm I, I'm I'm all about the safety aspect, no doubt. But I'm also trying to see it from. From whether from a player's point of view, and then because when I come into something, when I join something, which again this is to a lot of different categories, when I join something, I'm joining something with the idea of the rules are what, what they, are. they are. Okay, and that's fine. And and I think so when you're playing the game. You know, and for all these people who yell and scream at the officials, yeah, and, we'll talk and, about that next. Session. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. I mean, my thing is, is you don't even really know the rules, and that's fine. So okay. you look at something, you know, you look at something, and you make the case that it's wrong because but see, it looked wrong. Well, okay, to you. but what I'm saying is this, and and you can jump in and tell me that's why the NBA and the NFL are the greatest leagues to me. Because they're constantly evaluating the play and they're constantly, sometimes to the detriment, they're tinkering the rules to make it more exciting, to make it uh, more competitively balanced. You know, for example, we weren't nobody in the history of football. You've been playing football, coach football 40 years, 50 years. You ain't never thought about a PAT. But the NFL moved it back because they say, hey, that, that'll make it more exciting. That, we might make some misses. You might have to go for two a little bit more. So that's why you adjust the rules. And what I'm saying is just like what they did with um, in the NBA with Dwayne Wade. Remember, he used to f pump fake the three and he'll jump into the defender. Mm -hmm. Now that's offensive foul instead of being a defensive foul. And the problem was it was always an offensive foul. It, yeah. just, it wasn't officiated that way. Okay. So yeah. th they made that a point of emphasis what yeah. they did. Toward, and But the rule sets change all the time. Yeah. So uh, the, rules, the rules change. Like this year in, in high school basketball – they're eliminating the one and one So there's no more one and one in high school basketball. And, and tell us about that. What, so, what does that mean? Okay, so uh, now after five fouls, you're going to shoot two shots. So there's no more one and one and the fouls are going to reset after each quarter. And, that, and that's 
five total for, like your, your on team your fifth foul you're shooting two yeah no, and that's yeah. the team the team yeah. that team has team five fouls, fouls. yeah okay, team gotcha. fouls yeah so there there's no more one on one it's we're just going two shots okay and the team fouls will reset after each quarter so what that does is it it helps your game because say we have a we start out and we've got a really raggedy game and both teams are fouling and we we get to the bonus uh, in the first quarter in 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 the game both ways 17 fouls both ways yeah. now we're starting that second quarter we're already shooting free throws in that second quarter now they're eliminated you're a really bad first quarter we're starting fresh in the second quarter you've got two or three guys on the bench that have multiple fouls already so the game flows a lot better because college women's been doing it for two or three years now. And it comes down mm-hmm. from the NBA. The NBA has been doing it also. So it, the r- way the rule sets normally go is NBA, college women, high school. And okay. men kind of do their own thing in yeah. basketball. Uh, okay. So I, I like that. So, and, I, and like you just mentioned, just to clarify, so you think that's a rule change inspired – to uh, help the flow of the game. Yes. Okay, and as official, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. To me, when I watch college basketball, and I watch basketball, NBA, college, whatever, high school, women college basketball to me is top tier right now. It, it's, it's the most watchable basketball product out in my opinion. I just want to know, I don't know, maybe you can't it's, answer it. No, it's because I'm a, yeah. I'm a college women's official. Okay. It's yeah. because of the freedom of movement. So, yeah. so – I, I don't work men's college basketball, but I know they tried to implement a couple of years ago the freedom to move and tried to yeah. put hand checking into the game and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, they did. Everybody didn't buy into it. All mm-hmm. the all the people in the game, the coaches, the the referees, everybody didn't buy into what the NCAA was trying to do at that point. So it started out. They called a lot of fouls, and as the season went on, it just went back to the way it was. So gotcha. in, in in college women, everybody bought into the freedom of movement thing. So we call the hand checks. We call the arm bars. And what that does is it makes it more of a watchable game. You're, you, you're just not bumping and grinding on each other. Yeah, that's exactly. Bumping and grinding on yeah. each other all. Because I didn't, I didn't really put it, like conceptualize it like that, but that's exactly so what it is. They play, it's so they, free. They, play, they play defense yeah. with their hands up here. Yeah. If you watch a high school basketball, you watch a men's college basketball, first thing you see is hands on. Yeah. First thing you see, and if you put that arm bar, if I put that arm bar on somebody, I can guide them anywhere I want to guide them, and, mm-hmm. and well, so it gets into a, a bump and grind kind of deal. We though that's the difference in in what you're watching is that freedom of movement. No hands is in the game. Right okay, now. that's yeah. Is is there? And this is this may sound like a crazy question, but but just listening to when you start talking about the freedom of movement and that kind of thing, what is in the basis of safety, especially let's say like in, in basketball, which doesn't necessarily have a serious injury, head injury or something like that. To your knowledge, like what is what is the what are the types of rules that are changed for the simple fact of safety? You know, well, basketball, they, they, it's not really safety fouls in basketball. Uh, they, they, they put in a couple years ago, they put the elbow in. So any contact to the head or neck edge or at, uh, above the shoulders was an automatic intentional foul. That didn't really stick. They, they put it back into judgment for us. So more safety-wise, it's more concussion-based in basketball. Mm-hmm. So what they've done is, uh, like in, in, in high school, we're, we're encouraged to take uh, the, uh, the concussion course that the NFHS uh, yeah. submits every yeah. year. So we take that course. And then w- the, there's signs and symptoms of a concussion. We're, we're trained to kind of see that. And if we see that, we send those players out. If we see signs or symptoms of concussion, we send them out. Then it's up to the coach to either have them checked out or put them back in at that point. All we do is say, Coach, uh, 23 is showing signs or symptoms, and, and we need we need them to be evaluated. And it's up to the coach at that point. So, All right, so that's, let me, that's let me ask do. one more question before we go to break. Um, regarding basketball, uh, do you – like, I, I miss the 90s sort of aggression of basketball, right? Not necessarily the hard fouls and kind of some of that stuff was ridiculous now that you watch it back. But, you, you know, the, the talk smack – the uh, smack talking and different things of that nature. Do you think – not necessarily that it should come back in totality, but can we bring some semblance of that of that playground back to, you know, big-time basketball? And well, before, before you answer that, before you answer that, let me ask yeah. – let me add this to his question. Mm-hmm. Because that's the same as in football. Yeah. You know – you can you can go into the end zone. You can spike it. 
you know, you might get a, a little bit of a dance in mm. the hair, but you've lost a lot of that because of, you know, for the, people going overboard, pe- people yeah. going overboard, yeah. and then other people getting mad at it mm-hmm. and reacting to it. So, what is that thought process at from an official standpoint? What would you see that's okay? Yeah. So, and what's not? Yeah. And what's as, not? Yeah. As an official, so taunting is where we draw the line. So, if we if we deem it a taunt instead of just celebration, celebration or Part of the game, talking. Uh, yeah. you, you hear players talking to each other all the time. Yeah. If it's a, if it's an A B type thing, and it's it's not to where you think it's taunting or affecting or influencing the game, then we we just we let we let it go. Yeah, but it, like y'all, because I know like the stare downs in basketball. You know, you just dunk on somebody or some a female uh, basketball player shoots a nice shot or layup. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just part of the. You know, I'm staring you down. You know, it seems like that's, and, and that's you, out of the game. So you know? it, it depends on the severity. Okay. And, and so if if it's just something that's off the cuff, we'll mm-hmm. just say don't do it again. Okay. So if we think that it's going to get a reaction, then we'll say don't do it again. Gotcha. It, it just depends on the severity of the taunt, uh, mm-hmm. but or the severity of the reaction. We, that we're arbiters of the game, so we have to be able to control that aspect of the game. Okay, arbiters of the game. I like that. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there, and then we'll we'll. I, I'm curious to see how this works because I'm a, I'm I'm adamant about the guy who scores the touchdown or the guy who make. Let's just say makes a tackle, a good tackle. And he gets oh, up Lord. and he goes celebrating crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you just made a tackle. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I, to me, I think because we don't, we don't throw those flags, mm-hmm. that more people celebrate just simple, normal plays. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, it's one thing of getting a touchdown. It's another thing getting an interception, a great catch. But a, just a regular tackle, a regular run for seven yards, and you get up, flip the ball, and pat your chest and do all that. Like, to me, dude, you just you just did what you were supposed to do. You are the anti-fun police. I, I, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but I'm, I'm old school. Now, you as an official, we know that there are the rules and regulations, so you know what you call your take on that personally, what would how would you like that to be? Well, that it in my coach, if I was a coach, I wouldn't like it. Okay, because I, I, I would. I, I, See, I like him already. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm the you make the go to your sideline. If if you want to celebrate, go to your sideline, celebrate with your team over there. I just you see it all the time where you know kids are being kids, and it's just. <clears throat> They, I, you see it all the time in 40, 50 point games where they make some kind of play and you're getting beat by 40, 50 points. There's and no, see, and I think that's crazy. And I think, but see, I think that trickles yeah. down yeah. to the kid, to the younger kids because mm-hmm. they see it and now they want to get some of that action. You know, they mm-hmm. want to, they don't care about the score. I just made a big play, so I'm going to do a dance or or something. Yeah, and to but me, I it's like we, it's, it's the game is supposed to be fun, so we can't legislate every all the fun parts. I didn't say I didn't say legislate all of it. I'm just yeah, saying. But I'm saying if you, for example, if you don't really get no burn, you make a nice little tackle. You know, if you second, third team, if you, you want to kick in, off team, if you want to kick yeah. off team, you run down, you make, make a good a nice hit. Tackle, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm know? okay with that. Yeah. I'm not okay, but I'm I, I'm just for me, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I, I'm this guy. Mm-hmm. Don't wear sunglasses at a night game, <laughs> and you a star, and you ain't playing. But you've been there. You've been there your whole life, though. So it's like you or you saw yourself there your whole life. So you know it's not a big deal for you, but it might be for somebody else. You, know. if, you're a, if you're if you're if you're a baller, if you're a baller, <laughs> and you're not playing, the the last thing you need is to try to draw attention to yourself. That's all I'm saying. You know, that's all. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take dance. a quick break and we'll be right back at you. What he said, let him dance. Contact Carl Lee on email. Let's talk Carl Lee at gmail.com or text 409 422 7539. You're listening to Let's Talk with Carl Lee. Sponsorship opportunities are available. Email let's talk at promessage.com or call 304 342 8131. For more information, visit wchsnetwork.com slash let's talk. Now, Back to the conversation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with Let's Talk, and it's uh, Hollis Lewis. Um, 
<laughs> and, and and Jason, the, one of one of the interesting things as we went out on the out out of the show at the break was Hollis's concept of trying to get somebody on his side. You know, he <laughs> <laughs> he has kind of a, a kind of a sly way to get people on his on his side and and things his way. I just want to make the case. Okay, I just want to make the case. I think it's Justin Jefferson, I think, that was out for the Vikings mm-hmm. um, this past week. Yeah. And he had, um, you know, he had a hoodie, sunglasses on, yeah. you know, the whole, you know, the whole deal. And, and I know that's not an official thing, but it is, it is, it, it, it is to me that kind of, um, look or attention that I think guys look for mm-hmm. now. And I think that plays down to the younger athletes who see that and they don't see the – there's no consequences to it. And now we see that down on the lower level because they don't know that you shouldn't do that if you're not winning or you shouldn't <laughs> – that, that, you know, you you haven't reached that point. And I, I, I would make the case that I'm interested in – um. How do you feel if you had the opportunity to say, okay, we should penalize these types of things simply because we needed to stop? Because it's, you know, there, there, we know instant gratification. Like, right? We know instant celebration. You know, when you get an interception and you're excited about it and you jump up, you throw the ball down, and, you know, if you slam it, you might get a 15. Yeah. You know, but – you can do flips, you know, and you thought about it, or you thought about a dance, me and you and four other guys. If I score, one of us score, we're going to get in the end zone, we're going to do this dance. To me, that's a that to me sounds like flag all day long. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> that makes the game fun. So there, there's, there's, a, there's a big difference between spontaneity and, and, and pre-rehearsed routines. So obviously – we are instructed. There are certain things that we're instructed through the rules to to take care of, and taunting is the main one. So taunting has to go back to the root of football. Football is a violent game, and it's hard to control anyway. So when you, when you let taunting and stuff like those type of actions go, then it really becomes a, a hard thing. So we have to take taunting off the table. So we take taunting off the table. Now you're talking about celebrations. And – spontaneous celebrations we 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 let some of those go now the rehearsed stuff NFL has their guidelines high high school you really don't see it in high school uh, it just it 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 doesn't really for whatever reason right. they take it to the sideline they they might do a little dance as they're going to the sideline but high school still takes it to the, we we didn't have any real taunting fouls all year that I I mean not any celebration fouls that I can remember other than we should have had a couple ball in the air going in prior oh, yeah, to I that. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, yeah we 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 so had you it. can't like so if I'm going into the end zone to score and yeah, I put the ball up, up yeah, or that's, out that's that's, well, they, a, that's they, the ball up and they flipped it up. It was well, a little extra. They put extras on it. Well, I but the, we're, we're we're told any of that type of any of that type of thing going into the end zone that that's supposed to be an automatic foul. Yeah. And my crew actually missed a couple of them this year. So, but and we talked about it, it and it, it can happen. You get straight line. You can't see see what went on. But we try to take those type of things out of the game because those can be construed as taunts and, and that type of stuff. The celebrations with teammates, we 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 let a lot of that go. We don't we we're not real strict on that type of stuff. The taunting is really where officials need to draw the line and need to have black and white. So speaking of missed calls, we talked about it earlier. We know there's sort of a a crisis of officials not wanting to, you know, actually some of them quit mid-game. It's hard time recruiting officials because of the abuse of officials by coaches, players, and particularly the fans. So as a official, kind of what's your perspective? What's your message on that? So we're, right now in, in football, we're right around 570 officials in the whole state of West Virginia in high school. Is that a lot? or That is not a lot. So oh, okay. when I got in, it was probably 750, wow. 800, something Dang. like that. So 
and that you got in 27 years ago or 13, football 15 years 15 ago. years ago yeah. so from 15 years ago to yeah. now it's dropped 20 almost 20 yeah. 20 30 percent yeah wow yeah and yeah. every official that i know mm -hmm. that i've talked to mm -hmm. the very first thing that they say is it is very difficult now to get a fit that's what i hear sports I newspaper articles yeah. so and the reason it's hard to get officials mm -hmm. to do stuff is it just like it is with anything else it it, it officiating to be good at officiating, you have to really take pride in your craft. You had to put a lot of time into it. I was explaining to Carl earlier, a, a Division three football game, I'm gone if, if, if the league I work is mostly in Pennsylvania. So I've got a three-hour drive. i got to be there two and a half hours before the game. The game's three hours long, and i got a three-hour drive back, and I'm making $200. So mm. I'm making $10 an hour, maybe, if you don't take the gas out of it. So it's not a money thing. You have to, to – if you want to continue – if you want to officiate, it's a love of the game type deal. Because mm. right now we had 12 in rookie school in basketball this year. We had maybe six or seven in rookie school in football. Out of those 12 and six, maybe two last – two or three will last five, six years because they get into it and they see what, what – if you want to be good at it, Mm -hmm. what it's required to be good at it, which is studying the rules. Officials don't get fired for mm -hmm. bad calls. Officials get fired for misapplication of rules. Mm -hmm. So we are tasked with knowing the rule book inside and out. So if we misapply a rule, then we're, we've got to, uh, we, we might be losing games, we might be getting fired, that type of stuff. We don't get fired for missing pass interference. We get fired for misenforcing pass interference. So yeah. that that's what people don't really understand. So to the, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say that and the reality of the fan base, especially in Abuse. basketball, because it's so yeah. close. If you were if you were able to talk to talk to a parent and say, like you know, hey, it's not that it's not that big of an issue. You know, when you're at the basketball game and they're yelling and screaming and, and all that. Because, again, I am so anti that. Yeah. Like, I just think that's the worst. Because it would be like anybody at a job trying to do their job and somebody's in your face yelling and screaming at you that you're doing wrong or you're what they think you called is not right. So I, I made a Facebook post towards this scenario. So I was at a, at a basketball game. And I made a call, and everybody in the gym booed me. Everybody in the gym booed me. I kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a warm, fuzzy feeling out of that because it's just them showing their displeasure with the call I made. But they're not questioning my character. They're not questioning my heritage. They're not doing any of that stuff. All they're saying is, we didn't like that call. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the people yelling at you, telling you how, how you're cheating. I've never seen one official in my life ever cheat. I've seen a lot of bad officials. I've seen a lot of officials make really bad calls. I've never seen anybody cheat. So when people call you cheaters and say you're doing all this stuff and questioning your integrity, that's what drives people away from being officials. And, and the things people say to you, they think they can pay that $7, $10, and have carte blanche. They can say anything they want to you. Yeah. That, that's the way they feel is I paid my money. I can say whatever I want to you. And it, it's, a, it's a really uncomfortable. I've had grandmothers come up to me after, <laughs> after, after games and tell me what a, a, a poor individual I am. And I have no business being alive. Basically, yeah. and I know, think we're seeing that with like the NBA and the players, because mm -hmm. like you know, like you said, the NBA basketball is close as far as their proximity of uh, the fans' proximity to the players, and now players are like you got to get him, you know, this fan out of here because they just it's too much. But I guess my question is, is that I kind of understand that um, the the anger and the vitriol coming from like a a college football or college basketball fan or something to that effect. I guess what I see is just like the like youth leagues. 
You see the umpires at like Little League Baseball games oh, just getting chewed up. Well, it's, and, it's, and there's, shortage of, there's shortage of those, too. Oh, you, 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 without yeah. any question. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, there's shortage. Baseball, softball is yeah, big. Yeah, there's shortage of officials everywhere. And, and, and we're doing a lot of things to try to – the WVSSAC mm-hmm. is promoted. The, I actually run a, a camp in the summer, and I teach young officials how to officiate. I, I, I run our rookie schools, and I also run a camp for basketball and, and, and teach young officials how to officiate. People don't understand that good officials, this is not just – during basketball, we go to camps in the summer. We get video critiques. We have other veteran officials. I go to – I'm a clinician at two different camps. I'm one in Wheeling, and I also go to one in Ohio, and, and I teach officials how, how, how to referee. And mm-hmm. you, you put a lot into it. That's how you get hired at the higher levels is you go to camps and, and you get critiqued, and then that's the way you move up so the ladder. So I got camps too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know, yeah. What's, 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 what, what's intriguing to me about yeah. hearing this is, is, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, for the parents out there who, if you are that person who's that yeller and screamer at the official, I, my, my question to you to ponder on mm-hmm. What are the rules that you know about every single game that you go that your kid is playing? <laughs> like, what actually are, do you know that the, what the rules are? Like, but when's I, the last time? I don't time? think it's a logical. It's all emotional. If you're sitting well, there yes, like going but, crazy, but, but the... what what can stop you from being emotional yeah. is when you realize that you don't know at all. Yeah. Right? You right? Just, hey, you know you seen the bad. I don't call. know anything <laughs> about law. Yeah. I don't know anything about law. So if I'm sitting here trying to convince you. This case is a bad case, and and that lawyer on the other side is just this bad, and he's da 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 da. How do I? What do, what what is the foundation of where yeah. that comes from? Yeah, there What's is none. Yeah, you know there is none, and I think people people and 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 God forbid if you lose, yeah, because now it is truly it is truly your fault. Like yeah. you are you that call that you but, made before halftime. But I will say again, when you're talking about just going. Back to our uh, the first half of the show, when you talk about those black and white rules, and when you have to make those myriad of calls, whether they affect the game or not, I think from a fan's perspective, it's like they're thinking it is his fault because why did you make that you know clip when he was guy was fifty yards downfield? Why did you make that call? Because you know what I'm saying. So the referees is cheating. So I think in a fan's mind, in an illogical fan's mind, that's what they're thinking. You oh, know I, what I'm saying? no question about it. But but they they you know. Point in case, the show right here, yeah. right? Like, the question becomes: Do you even really know what what the that's, officials that's no. are supposed <laughs> to do? Well, you no, know, you go to rookie school. You go to rookie <laughs> there you school. Go. There you, go. you pull that. I played basketball all my life. I had never seen a rule book. I I oh. bet you very few people have <laughs> ever seen a rule book that actually played basketball. Have ever seen a rule book? I had never seen a rule book. All I had ever heard was people tell me the rules of basketball, and so many of them are not not legitimate. They're like self-pass, no such thing. Okay, there's no such thing as self-pass. Over the back, there's no such thing as over the back. It has to be on the back or through the back. Over the back, I can reach over you all I want. It's illegal contact that that is actually a foul. I didn't know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Just, <laughs> See, yeah. so if you had a basketball game, yeah. you you yelling and screaming because he missed the call. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and Over you the have back. no clue. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the interesting thing to but me. But that's part of the game, I think. Oh, like, yeah. it, it's it part of, it's I think part it's part of, of nature. I don't think it's part of the game. No, no, it's part of what makes sports exciting because you have these illogical, fanatical fans who don't care what – Really, they don't care what the rule is, long as it doesn't hurt their side or yeah, the that's, team. Yeah, that's 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 a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? It kind of that's the dynamic of just a sporting event. It can't be so stealth and just so you know linear that it doesn't create any chaos. And th- there's nothing wrong with that. It's yeah. it's the personal attacks that, that, yeah, I, yeah. that drive the yeah. referees out. Because so and again, I just related attack. back to like youth sports because I mean I've seen like videos where. You see it a lot in baseball too, where umpires have literally just walked off. I mean, this is literally this right. is like ten year olds, right? Mm-hmm. This isn't like high school. This is ten year olds. They getting so verbally abused, but they just like, man, I ain't, this ain't worth it. Well, referees yeah. are getting assaulted at at unbelievable, well, battered at unbelievable yeah. uh, uh, levels. And let's right clarify: now. battered means you actually got hit. Yeah, bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there's, there's a difference. Know. There's a difference between assault, assault and battered. Batter, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Assault is verbal. And again, yeah. it's a game that's taking place. And and to your emotional piece, like, you yeah. know, 
that's too far. <laughs> okay, yeah, when you get to when you get to a point where you are actually angry, yeah, you're too far. Well, when, when you're pursuing uh, officials, when when you're you when you're we, when you're going down, when you leave your seat and you go down to where those officials leave the field, that is that's too far. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but see some, but see, and it, ha- it, it times this year. Three times until you were just in our games, yeah, in games wow. we were. See, at. but but where that started was the emotion in the seat. That might be a little crazy. You might, you know, so you know, yeah, yeah. You got be, an issue. Yeah, you you, you have, have an issue if issues. you if you the moment that you get up out of your seat mm-hmm. and you start heading toward. Yeah, you might have other issues. Thinking that you're that. getting ready to say something to an official because of a call or calls, and your team lost, you have you need to check something. Don't 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 stop at the, at the, at the at the referee. Go to the hospital. You need to wow. keep going because there's something wrong. Yeah. You're taking it too far. Again, at the end of this, basketball what? Game. Football what? Game. Girls basketball, game. Okay? Not life. The, the, the life kids coach. in it, it's the life. kids in it, the kids in it are getting life lessons. Yeah. And we, we as the adults in the room, but, bro, this, are showing them the crazy side. Bro, this this loss affected my opportunity fool. to get a scholarship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, bro. Uh, you know, they, them I, college I, coaches ain't win looking at them win, wins and losses. They're, 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 they're looking at that forty time. And please that, say that yeah, again. Yeah. Please say that yeah, again. Not looking oh, at here, that we here we go. Here we go. I have tried to convince people yeah. that. Winning and losing has zero to do yeah. with your yeah. college. They're, yeah, they're looking at perspective. They're looking at that ability or and, opportunity. Yeah, and when you, you threw a forty-yard dash in there, mm-hmm. I, I, that caught that rang in my ear. Yeah. When's the last time you took your kid out and had him run a forty-yard dash? Have you shown him what a forty-yard dash, how to start? You know, all of those kinds of things. Because he's going to need. To do that, if he's going to play, he or she, he she or now. she, yeah. he or she, yeah, look, and and you know, and, and I think at speed, you got to be fast with the ball, r- right? And and those kind of those are the things, and not trying to get off off pace, but when we start talking about winning and losing, everybody thinks that oh gosh, that that that's gonna that's gonna hurt my chances, and which again goes back to a conversation that we've beat down a thousand times. Transferring to somewhere that's winning is only gonna, you're only going to still play so many high school football yeah. games, and if you're not playing at that team and you're not qualified to yeah. make it to, to, to college, yeah. so so you mentioned that you were uh, you know a clinician. You mentioned you are basically a f- official coach, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So if you have somebody out there listening now, they're interested in getting into the game. What's step one, step two? How do they how do they become official? Uh, send me a message on Facebook. All you got to do is contact, look up the SSA, WVSSAC. They have uh, on their website, they have how to become an official. Just reach out to anybody that you know is an official, and they'll put you in contact with somebody uh, somebody that knows somebody that knows a training club. So I, I guess what I'm – so step one – Step one out, is contact an official. Training cor- what's the yeah, training, training course? Training course. Entail? So uh, – the they've uh, the training course has actually changed. Used to be we sat in a classroom for three straight weeks, three nights a week. Uh, now you can do half of it online. So yeah. fifteen of the thirty hours uh, for the referee training class is online now. So then we have fifteen hours of practical after that, and we do that via scrimmages and stuff like that. So just contact your local organization. We'll set you up with a rookie school. And then we'll get you through that rookie school, and then you start working games. We're at such a low level of officials now that we've got rookies working high school varsity games. And and how much? And you know, the people gonna want to know how much does a high school referee get paid? Mm-hmm. So high school varsity game, you're gonna make somewhere between ninety and a hundred dollars um, mm-hmm. for hour and fifteen minutes worth of work at, in, during, the during the game. You yeah. have to be there an hour before the game. So, hundred bucks. Uh, middle school, you actually make. Uh, you work three game in the Canal Valley. You work three games. Uh, we're a little different than a lot of the other places, but you work three games. You work a, a JV game and two varsity games. So you're making one hundred and seventy eight dollars uh, per from, game, or just no total. total. So sixty three, oh. sixty three, and fifty eight. 
Okay. And, and, and for a referee or somebody's out there thinking, hey, man, I want to take this to the highest level. I'm going to Ed uh-huh. Hockley's. I want to go so, NFL, NBA. So what's like, what's the, what's the prospects? So I have mm-hmm. a, I mean, it's, it, you got to kind of be a one percenter. If, if you're no going to be a, if you're going to be a professional referee, I have a buddy uh, from Charlton Heights. Uh, he's a, he's basically does nothing but division one basketball. Mm-hmm. He works in 17 mm-hmm. leagues. He's going to make around 200 grand this year. Referee. So, mm-hmm. Base, uh, like, say, just an, an average, uh, well, I mean, the like, Big 12, the bottom tier in the Big 12 is like $3,500 a game in okay. basketball. Yeah. So, football, uh, Division 1AA, you're making somewhere between twelve and $1,500 a game. Uh, that's not that's mid major. Not, that's not, that's not <laughs> mid mid no, major yeah. twenty seven fifty something like that. The yeah. most I've ever made was twenty five hundred for a game. So oh, that's nice. That's but that's at the Division one level, and that's a whole. It takes a while to get there. To get there, yeah. And, and it and a lot of people can't do it. A lot of people yeah. just aren't good enough. To but like you, you said, you got to put in the time. What what is it? Is it because they don't have the? They don't have the ability. So officiating is a lot like sports. Some people are wow. good at it. Some See, I people, wouldn't have thought that really. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that at all. Some people are just not a, good at it. See, some I people thought it was an accident. Some people, issue. no, no, yeah. no. Some people just don't, will never know what a foul is. Some people just do not have the ability to to understand what is illegal contact. Yeah, I think, even, that, I think even, that's me. Even <laughs> even as black me. and white as we yeah, try to make it, me. some people just cannot go from here to putting the air in the whistle and getting yeah, it right. My whistle would be in my pocket. Because yeah. <laughs> I would think Facts. like a, 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 a guy who's played ball, I think that one of the problems I think I would have, especially if I were trying to do football, mm-hmm. is I'm watching the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, as soon as the but ball I think, snaps, you, I well, think, you, I think as, you can separate yourself out of that. No, so here's what yeah. happens. So you go to rookie school. You, mm-hmm. you, you learn about officiating. We teach you about officiating. Guess what you don't do for the rest of your life? Watch you don't game. watch the game. You yeah. watch the referees. So that's yeah. the way, as an official, anytime I turn a game on, I immediately look to see who's refereeing, and I watch whichever one interests me the most, and I watch that official the whole game. That's see, wild. and that's and see, and I'm I'm I, see, I'm, and and that's why I'm like totally the opposite of like like I don't really like watching games and stuff like that because like I, I I'm going to critique people. And I feel like mm-hmm. now I'm 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 that fan that's sitting in there that was critiquing me that I didn't like, yeah. and now I'm critiquing Hollis because I'm watching him play, and it's like uh, I don't I don't really want to I don't really want to do that, yeah. you that's, know, because I think yeah. that's hard. It's hard not to it's hard not to do that. It's crazy because now with me because I coached and I understand like uh, the importance of O line D line. That's what I watch now. So I'm watching the game from the O line D line's perspective on out. Oh, yeah. Because you know, I, mean? I never coached him, but I understand like that's where you win at. Right. So I always, I my eyes go there first, and then I kind of yeah. Same way, that's there. what we do as yeah. officials. We the especially in football because we're working different positions. Like in high school mm-hmm. football, I'm a white hat. In college football, I'm a back judge. So we're we're looking at the game through different perspectives in that also because yeah. okay. that's another thing people don't understand is especially when you're working when you're when you're watching it on TV on Saturdays and Sundays you're getting all these different angles well those angles that the referees have are completely different than those TV angles yeah. so you, so you yeah. see something that is in super slow mo and you're like how can they miss that it's like because they, they can't see they it can't see. let me let me ask you just one quick question. It, it, the same process to be a, a official in uh, football, basketball, baseball is that the same process as being a, like a judge in boxing? Or is that just something totally uh, I have different? No idea That's about different. boxing. Okay, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Start so, throw that in. so when it comes down to officiating, it, it's really there's one principle: you have to like this. You have to have this angle. Well, no, I, I don't mean like watching the the sport. I just mean like breaking into. Becoming. Yeah, I have no idea about okay, boxing. Gotcha, gotcha. No clue. Okay. But most of the sports are pretty much the same. Breaking into, you have a rookie school, a local organization you go to, and then then you go up, then then you work your way up the ladder like that. Gotcha. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap, and um, I'm sure that Hollis Lewis will get a he'll get a flag here soon. Uh, we appreciate it, and we'll be back with you next week. We're out. The opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of WVRC Media, its management, employees, or sponsors. Contact Carl Lee on email. Let's talk Carl Lee at gmail.com or text 409-422-7539.